Hey guys, um, today we're going to be doing chapter 2, lesson 3, which is solving multi-step equations. And your what I should learn is essentially the same thing as the title, to write and solve multi-step equations. And the good thing about this lesson is it takes what we did in chapter 2, sections 1 and 2, so the last two lessons, and kind of puts those two lessons together. So chapter 2, lesson 1, was solving two-step equations, and section 2, the last section of this chapter, was combining like terms. So those two things it puts together into one um, lesson and that's solving multi-step equations. And it's solving, solving multi-step equations because uh, there's more than two steps, but the two things that you can do to break it down and make it easier to solve is one, you can combine your like terms. And the second thing, which we have been working on, is you can use your distributive property. And when you use the distributive property, it eliminates um, some of the steps in the equations and it pretty much brings it back to at least a two-step equation, which you should be comfortable solving at this point. But let's take a look at some examples um, to help us get through this lesson. So the first thing we're gonna look at is solving by simplifying first and we're going to simplify using combining like terms. So an example problem would be something like this 3n plus 9 plus 4n equals 2. Now <clears throat> this has many more than two steps. We've got multiplying, addition, addition, multiplying. So that's a four step equation but we can bring this down to a much more manageable problem if we first combine our like terms. So simplify the equation before you try to do anything else. Um, hopefully you looked at this and you saw right away that we've got 3n and 4n as our like terms and you've already worked with combining them so this is going to break this equation down to 3n plus 4n which is 7n plus 9 equals 2. And now I've got a nice two-step equation that I can solve. Remember, you're solving in the reverse order of operations. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides first. 9 minus 9 is 0. That's gone. 2 minus 9, for you integer folks, that's negative 7. So I'm left with 7n equals negative 7. And then I'm going to do divide by 7, which is 1. And then negative 7 divided by 7 a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and 7 divided by 7 is 1. And I've just solved a multi-step equation very easily. And what are the steps? Step 1 is to simplify it by combining like terms. Step 2 is subtraction in this case, and then the next step is to uh, inverse operations divide. And remember, you can always check your work. If I took the negative 1 and plugged it back into the equation, what would happen? Well, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, so I'm going to record that over here. Plus 9, and then 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So I could have plus negative 4 equals 2. Okay. So let's double check. Negative 3 plus 9, <clears throat> that breaks down to positive 6. I was about to write negative 6. Plus negative 4 and 6 plus negative 4 does equal 2 so that equation checks out. So I'm going to scroll down where I've got another example already waiting. Um, I would encourage you to pause the video at this point, give it a try yourself, and then you can unpause, see how I solved it, and check your work. So if you just paused the video and unpaused it, here is how I would have probably solve this equation. Now this involves an extra step than the example of what we just did. Um, first I see my b's. 5b and negative 2b. These two things are like terms so I could have combined those first. So I've got negative 15 equals 5b minus 2b which is 3b. Okay, Plus 12 plus 6 and then obviously 12 and 6 are like terms so I can combine those and break this down even further. Negative 15 equals 3b 
plus 18. And now I've got a nice two-step equation. You've been working with these. You can do these ones. So inverse of addition is subtraction. 18 minus 18 cancels itself out. Negative 15 minus 18. Okay, that's negative 33. And now my last step is to divide because that's the inverse of multiplication. So divide by 3, divide by 3. 3 divided by itself is 1, so that just cancels out. And then negative 33 divided by positive 3 is negative 11. Okay, so there is that. And if you wanted to just double check your work, you could take your negative 11 and plug it in. So 5 times negative 11, because I'm plugging that in for b, is negative 55 plus 12 minus, now I've got 2 times negative 11, that's positive 20, uh, excuse me, 2 times negative 11 is negative 22, okay, plus 6. Now, we're just going to work from left to right, negative 55 plus 12, that's essentially subtracting, so 55 minus 12 is 43, so I'm at negative 43 minus a negative 22 plus 6. Well, minus a negative is really plus a positive. So I've got negative 43 plus 22. That's negative 21 plus 6, which if you've got your integer work down pat, that's negative 15. And that does check out to our original answer. So that solution works, and here is why, because I checked it for you, but there's our steps. Combine like terms, combine like terms, inverse operations, inverse operations, and then boom, you got your final answer. Um, now the other thing that you can do to simplify first is you can simplify by using the distributive property. Now I'm going to do distributive property in a couple word problems because it's always good to practice word problems. Um, so first we've got to come up with the equation and then we'll work to simplify it and then we'll work to solve it. So it's going to take a couple steps, but we can do this. Um, let's read. Your class hopes to collect 1,200 returnable bottles to raise money for a class trip. During the first week, the 24 students in your class collect an average of 34 bottles each. How many more bottles per student should the class collect? Well, right here, excuse me, in your question, you've got the variable. How many more bottles? So we're looking for B for bottles. I'm just going to keep that in the back of my head. Um, and this is what I think your equation breaks down to. And I'll go through this a couple of times. You've got 24 students. Okay. Now they're each going to collect 34 bottles. Okay. So I'm multiplying it by 34 bottles per student. But they need to collect more bottles because they've got to reach a higher number so they can get to 1,200 total. So plus some extra amount of bottles. We don't know how many, but we're going to call that B. So 24 students times the 34 they've already collected each, plus they need to collect some more bottles each. And that's what we want to find out. And all together they should get 1,200 1, total bottles. So now I've got an equation of 24 times 34 plus B equals 1,200. Now if you're struggling with the setting up of the word problem, don't worry we're going to do um, many more of these examples and I will help you individually in class as you need it. But if you need to re-see that and hear what I said, pause the video, rewind, and watch it again. Um, now to solve this, remember we're going to simplify first and then solve. So to simplify, I've got to distribute. So 24 needs to go to everything in the parentheses. So 24 times 34 is 816 plus 24 times B is 24b equals 1200. Now it's just a two-step equation. Subtract 816 from both sides. You should be pretty much a pro at this at this point. 
1200 minus 816 is 384. So I'm left with 24B. Remember, always rewrite your um, sides so it's easy to see. It's neater for you to double check in case something went wrong. Divide by 24. Okay, so I'm left with B equals 384 divided by 24 is 16. So B equals 16. And remember, you can always double check your work and make sure it works. So I could plug 16 into B here. So I'm going to actually check over here. 24 times, and you don't need that multiplication sign, but I'm just putting it there to focus us. Okay, so I'm going to do my parentheses first, PEMDAS, 34 plus 16. Okay, and that's 50. And then if I do 24 times 50, just double checking, it does equal 1200. So perfect. You solved the equation. You got the right answer. You checked it. And that's it. I'm going to do one more example. Um, again, pause it maybe and try yourself. And then you can see if you've got this down pat. If you pause the video and are unpausing, here's me solving this um, I'm going to read it first. Your class goes to an amusement park. Admission is $10 for each student and $15 for each chaperone. The total cost is $380. There are 12 girls in your class and 6 chaperones on the trip. How many boys are in your class? So we're talking about, let's do the students first. $10 per student. Now it's $10 per, how many students do we have? 12 girls plus I don't know how many boys, so I'm going to use B for boys because that's what I'm looking for, how many boys are in your class. So that's going to get us the cost of the students, plus I also need the cost of the chaperones, and that information is already given to me. I've got $15 per chaperone, and that's 12 chaperones. So that's the other part of the cost. And the total is going to be $380. So now I just need to simplify and we're working with this distributive property, so 10 times 12, do that first, this is going to the 12, that's 120, plus 10 times B is 10B, plus, now you could rewrite this and then do it on another line, but I'm going to simplify um, the cost of the chaperone. So 15 times 12 is 180, so that's the cost of the chaperones, equals 380. And now I can just um, continue to simplify. 120 and 180 are like terms. I'll circle those for you. 120 plus 180 is 300, plus 10B equals 380. And now I can subtract 300, subtract 300, I'm left with 10b equals 80, and then divide by 10, divide by 10, so I'm left with b equals 8. And now refocus yourself, answer the question fully, how many boys are in your class? There are 8 boys. Okay, final answer. And if you just want to double check, you can always plug it back in. So I plug this um, 8 in here, it would be 8 plus 12 is 20, 10 times 20 is 200, plus the 180 that I already have from the chaperones, it is 380, so that would be your answer, and it all works out. If you want to see that again, just to um, watch how I solved and see all the parts, pause, rewind, but if you're good to go, this is your last slide, your closing summary questions, um, pause the video for a sec, write them down, try them. If you need a little clarification or you just want to check your answers just shoot me a quick email and I'll send you one right back otherwise bring your work and any questions you might have into class tomorrow and we'll go over it hopefully this helped you with chapter 2 section 3 solving multi-step equations